The PDPA was passed in Sri Lanka on the 19th of March 2022. What collection of data is adequate, relevant and proportionate? So the obligation falls on you to be careful as to who you are granting your data to and for what purpose. Now the PDPA also grants several rights to the data subject. Companies can no longer send unsolicited messages or spam messages to you not following the provisions of this act will subject the data processor and the data controller to severe penalties. How should a company handle the collection and processing of personal data? And what are the rights you have with regard to your data? Hello and welcome back. In today's episode, we'll look at what a company needs to do to comply with the new Personal Data Protection Act of Sri Lanka and what rights you as an individual get through the act. Let's get started. The Personal Data Protection Act No. 9 of 2022 or the PDPA was passed in Sri Lanka on the 19th of March 2022 and with the passing of this act, Sri Lanka has joined a slew of other countries who are passing laws to control data collection and to ensure that they protect data privacy. The aim of the act is to strengthen the rights given to individuals with regard to their personal data and to regulate the processing of that data by data controllers. In this video, we'll talk about some of the key provisions of the Act and what you must do to comply with them. The PDPA applies to the processing of personal data by data controllers and processors in Sri Lanka. Section 56 of the Act defines personal data as any information that can identify a data subject directly or indirectly. This includes information such as name, address, phone number, email address, identification number and location data among other things. The Act applies to both automated and manual processing of personal data. And it's also important that the Act applies to both data controllers and data processors. Section 56 defines a data controller as a person who is in control of the data and determines the purposes and means of processing personal data, while a data processor is a person who processes personal data on behalf of a data controller. Basically, a data controller is the person who will be collecting the data and deciding what to do with the data, while the data processor will be the person carrying out any operation with the data or processing that data. Now, these functions are often carried out by the same entity, but there are instances where these two functions are carried out by two different entities. The Personal Data Protection Act sets out several principles on data protection that both data controllers and data processors must comply with. One of the most important principles that they must comply with is set out in Section 7 of the Act, which requires that the collection of personal data be adequate, relevant and proportionate to the extent that is necessary for the purpose for which the information is collected. The requirement calls for data minimization, that is, the collection of personal data must be limited to what is necessary only. For example, if I go to a fast food chain and order food, what data does the company need to collect? They obviously don't need to know my religion. They will most probably need to know certain dietary restrictions I have. But do they need to collect my email address and my phone number to serve me food? So this raises an important question mark as to what collection of data is adequate, relevant and proportionate. Another requirement is that the data can only be processed for specified, explicit and legitimate reasons as per Section 6. This means the purpose for which the data is being processed must be within the realm of being legitimate. Another key obligation placed on data controllers is the requirement of accuracy. Section 8 of the PDPA places a requirement to ensure that the processed personal data is accurate and kept up to date. So this means it becomes a responsibility of data controllers to ensure that they collect correct data and to update the data to ensure that there is no inaccuracies. For example, employers will have to make sure that the data that they collect about their employees are kept up to date and that they delete inaccurate data. Further, Section 10 requires that the data controller must ensure integrity and confidentiality of the data. That means the personal data must be processed and stored in a way that ensures appropriate security and protection against unauthorized and unlawful access and accidental loss, destruction and damage. So this places an obligation on the data controller to ensure that the data is not susceptible to being hacked or leaked and to have processes in place to keep your data confidential. And Section 9 of the Act places storage limitations on the collected data. 
which means that personal data that is collected can only be kept for as long as it's necessary for the purposes for which the personal data is processed. This means that you cannot keep the data that you have collected for an unlimited period of time. Now the Personal Data Protection Act specifically states that the processing of data must be lawful. So when is the collection and processing of data lawful? Schedule 1 of the Act speaks of multiple instances where the processing of data will be considered lawful. Number 1. Consent. This is when the data subject has given consent to the processing of their personal data for a specific purpose. Number 2. Contract. Where the processing of data is necessary for the performance of a contract to which the data subject is a party. Number 3. Legal obligation. Where the processing is necessary for the compliance with a legal obligation to which the data controller is subject. Basically, it means that the processing of certain data will be necessary to comply with the law. Number 4. Vital interests, where the processing is necessary to protect the vital interests of the data subject or of another natural person. This is where the processing of data is necessary to respond to an emergency that threatens life, health or safety of the data subject. Number 5. Public interest, where the processing of data is necessary for the performance of a task carried out in the public interest or in the exercise of official authority granted to the data controller. And number six, legitimate interest, where the processing is necessary for the purposes of the legitimate interest pursued by the data controller or by a third party, except where such interests are overridden by interests or fundamental rights and freedoms of the data subject. So in the sixth category, the legitimate interests of the data controller will be weighed against the fundamental rights of the data subject. And if the fundamental rights of the data subject outweigh the legitimate interests of the data controller, then they will not be lawfully allowed to process such data. So what this all means is there are several justifications which will make it lawful for the data controller to process our data. Out of these justifications, the most important one is probably consent. Basically, if you have consented to a company collecting your data and processing your data for a particular purpose, then there is nothing wrong as far as the act is concerned in that company collecting and processing your data. For example, if a social media network asks permission to collect and use your data for a specific purpose and you voluntarily say yes to this by clicking I accept, there is nothing wrong in that social media network processing your data. So the obligation falls on you to be careful as to who you are granting your data to and for what purpose. And as for a company collecting data, it's important to always ask for permission before you collect personal data. Now the PDPA also grants several rights to the data subject. These include the right to access, rectify and erase your personal data. Section 13 provides for the right to access your data. The data subjects have the right to obtain confirmation as to whether or not their personal data is being processed and have the right to request access to their personal data. Section 14 provides for the right to stop processing your data. The data subjects can at any time withdraw their consent to the processing of their data. Section 15 provides the right to rectification. The data subjects have the right to ask the data controller to rectify any inaccurate personal data concerning them. Section 16 provides the right to erase your data. You as the data subject have the right to ask the data controller to erase your personal data in certain circumstances such as when they haven't complied with certain sections of the act. So it's clear that the act provides certain rights to the data subject that's you and me that weren't there before the act came into being. Probably the most important of these rights is the right to disappear, that is the right to ask the data controller to erase your data. The Personal Data Protection Act in Section 20 requires data controllers to appoint a data protection officer for each company or group of companies. This data protection officer is responsible for ensuring that the company complies with the act and for acting as a point of contact between the data subject, the data controller and the data protection authority. This person appointed as the DPO of a company must have expert knowledge on data protection laws and practices. Part 5 of the PDPA also provides for the setting up of the Data Protection Authority of Sri Lanka. The objects of the authority shall be to ensure that the processing of personal data happens in accordance with the Act, 
to safeguard the privacy of data subjects, to provide mechanisms to ensure the protection of personal data of data subjects, and to ensure regulatory compliance with the provisions of the Act to facilitate growth and innovation in the digital economy. The Act also regulates the sending of solicited messages by companies to individuals using the data that they have collected, which may be done via text, email, etc. According to Section 27, in order to send such a message to a data subject, the data controller must first get the consent of the data subject. And further, the data controller must provide the data subject with an opt-out option when sending these messages and at the time of collecting the contact information. Basically, what this means is that companies can no longer send unsolicited messages or spam messages to you without your permission. They have to get your consent before they send these kinds of promotional material or newsletters to you and they must provide an opt-out option for you to unsubscribe receiving these messages. Now, not following the provisions of this act will subject the data processor and the data controller to severe penalties. So it's important that your organization comply with this act and protect the personal data of their customers and employees. But of course, it's important to understand that this act is quite new and that the limits of this act has not been tested yet. So we will have to wait and see how this law develops as more and more cases are filed and the courts give their interpretations of the act. Anyway, that's a quick look at the Personal Data Protection Act of Sri Lanka and how it regulates the collection, the processing and the storing of personal data. If you found this video useful, do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. I'll catch you in another episode. Take care. Bye. Mm.